cocaine wow. was my favorite. Uh, any kind of speed was my favorite drug. You know, anything make me go fast, sing all night long, you know. I think I started snorting coke when I was 15, 16 years old. I got a little bit on the, like, anxiety pills like Xanax, too, for a while. Um, but that's pretty much it, you know, and the drinking. Drink, I always drank hard. Drinking and cocaine go hand in hand, don't Oh, they? yeah. Yep. Yeah, I quit drinking uh, 43 days ago. Uh, first of the year, stopped drinking. Cool. Congratulations. Yep. Thank you. How you feel? How's that? I feel good. I'm feeling better every day. My shows are getting better. Um, writing better songs, I think. Alcohol and cocaine went hand in hand with Outlaw Country Music. Dylan sang the shows, played guitar, and drank like Waylon Jennings. Until recently when he decided to stop all of that nonsense. Nothing but his family and his music matter to him now. Don't leave before Dylan plays his newest song for us live, right here on Chopping It Up. All right, Mr. Wolfel. What's up? What's up, bro? Not much. I appreciate you making time. Yeah, man, I appreciate you, know I mean? you having me here. Had to get your kid on the bus. Yeah. We've been trying to do this for like two weeks, right? Yeah. Finally yeah. got everything settled kid, up. Kids were sick. They were sick all the time. <laughs> right. Everybody yeah. around here has been sick, yep. though. Yep. Yeah, man. That's what's up. Yep. So, first off, let's start right in the beginning, man. How long you been clean? I've been clean about two or three years. Uh, I've never really kept track of the date because I, I had slip-ups here and there, but about two or three years off right. hard drugs. What was you doing? Um. Cocaine was my favorite. Uh, any kind of speed was my favorite drug. Right. You know, anything make me go fast, sing all night long, you know. Right. Anything like that, pretty much. I got a little bit on the, like, anxiety pills like Xanax, too, for okay. a while. Um, but that's pretty much it, you know, and the drinking. Drink. I always drank hard. Drinking and cocaine go hand in hand, don't oh, they? Oh, yeah. Yep. Yeah, hand in hand. How about yep. meth? You ever try that? There was a couple of times where, you know, I thought I had Coke and it was meth and I, I could tell right away because it's, right. it's a different feel. And then you're up for three days straight, you know. Right. Instead of three hour buzz. I hated that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. That's some bad stuff. Bad, bad but, for sure. But yeah. So Coke, just snorting it, shooting it, smoking uh, it? I never shot anything up, never smoked it. Um, I think I smoked meth once when I was really down and out. Um but mostly just snorting coke. I think I started snorting coke when I was 15, 16 years old. Right. So I uh, I started pretty early. When it was actually coke and it didn't have the chance of having other shit in it too, yeah, right? Yeah, that's the scary thing now. Um, that's a big thing that got me out of it was just, you know, being scared of the fentanyl shit. Yeah. And, uh, Watching your friends drop. Yep. Yep. That's some scary shit. Also but, uh, shit they do every day. Yep. Right. Yeah, man. Yep. But that was pretty much my drug of choice. Yeah, and then and then you was drinking with that all the time too, right? So yeah. you get a little drunk and the coke bounces you back Speeds for a minute. Speeds you back up, and and then you can drink all night long. It's it's kind of pointless to do coke and drink all night because you don't keep the buzz very well. Right, you're you know, you just forth. back and forth all night long. Right. So and then you feel like hell the next day. <laughs> and then you quit drinking too. Yeah, well, I quit drinking uh, forty three days ago. Uh, first of the year, stopped drinking. Cool. Congratulations. Yep. Thank you. How you feel? How's that? I feel good. I'm feeling better every day. My shows are getting better. Um, writing better songs, I think. I wasn't hardcore drinking when I stopped. I had slowed down a lot. But uh what I would was, you consider hardcore drinking? Like drinking multiple days during the work week and then going hard all weekend too. That's what I all used right. to do. Um, you know, going to work just on a couple hours sleep, hungover, not worth a shit. You yeah. Know? But um, right before I quit, I was really only drinking at my shows. Um, nothing crazy, but I mean, you know, I got to get myself around. I don't want to get a DUI, so I was just like, you know, and I got kids. It's time to it's time right. to straighten up a little bit. You know, I don't want them seeing me like that. How old are you so, now? I'm gonna be 32 on March 7th. 32. Yep. Yeah. So I guess we was running around 10 years ago. Something like he that. He was early 20s. Was yeah. you, even, you wasn't even able to drink in the bars when we first started playing when, there, right? When, when we, I was going with you. I think when you first met me, I wasn't old enough yet. Right. But, um, like, even back then, like, I I was sneaking around and doing stuff. Of course. He, I was getting you drinks and putting them on the table. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, and drugs. Like, there there was probably times where you were around me where I was probably sneaking off doing something without saying anything. Right. Like, maybe sniffing a line in my car or, right. you know, anything like that. I, that's how I used to be. That's how it gets, though, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. That's how it gets. It gets where you don't want everybody to know what you're doing. Or yep. you don't want to share your drugs. That, too. 
Yeah. Oath. Yeah, it's a rich man's drug for sure. So Absolutely. That's a big, too much to give away. Big reason I had to get out of it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that was, uh, that was the thing about, you know, opiates and pills and all that shit for me. It's like, no matter what, I, I bought the pills first before yep. I paid my bills. It was, you know, pills before bills. Yep. That was like my motto. Yeah, I got tired of that shit real quick too, man. Yeah. It doesn't take long before you're doing shit you ain't supposed to be doing. Yeah. I, I kind of... I could have went down a road with like pain pills and stuff. I was in a bad car wreck about five years ago, and that was because of drinking. And uh, I shattered my right leg. I've got a metal rod in there. Um, and, uh, of course, they did surgery, and they put me on pain medicine. I think I was on um, oxycodones. Mm -hmm. And, man, I, I like those things way too much. And by the time I got home, you know, I, I had a schedule when I was supposed to take them, and I would skip a few so I could take multiple ones at night. To catch and, a buzz. And then I had a couple refills on them, and I was like, I don't even want this stuff anymore. I told them I was just going to wait it out. and But that could have been bad. And yeah, that's that, a good choice. And I think that's that's how a lot of people get addicted to that stuff is they just get hurt, and then the hospitals right. give them out, and yeah. then you, there uh, you go. That's not how it started for me, but I was able to manipulate doctors into giving me meds for yeah. years and years. Different doctors. That's a thing, too, for sure. Yeah. I've had friends do that, too. Doctor shopping. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah. I definitely did that all through. I mean, I remember riding motorcycles from office to office to office mm -hmm. and ended up with four scripts. And then we yeah. go cash all the scripts and then come home. You can't do that now because everything's linked by computers, you mm -hmm. know? Yeah, yeah, we used to do that big time. Yeah. That's a good choice, though, man, because if you like that other shit, uh, the opiates are a whole different world. Yeah, I, I definitely have. I realize now how bad my addictive personality is, so I try to control it the best I can, you know. Um, but I've, I've come a long way. It's it's all about willpower, you know. And All right, so that's what I was getting ready to ask. So how do you control it? What do you do? I, I do smoke weed. Okay. Um, I use that as a kind of a coping mechanism. I don't smoke it all day long or every day or anything, mm -hmm. but I do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There there are days where I go hard, but um but yeah, if I ever get the urge to like go to the bar or you know, just thinking of the past and how I used to be, I'll mm -hmm. just get real high and just mm -hmm. and just sit there and find something to do and then you're like, Man, I, I didn't want to do that. Like it kinda it kinda puts you in the way of thinking you should have been in in the first place, I think. I, I think it's a good way to get through it, for sure. Yeah, and it's interesting you say it that way, too, because I I've, I remember at the end of my Roxy stage or whatever, I didn't want to go. I didn't have no money. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? I knew it was getting bad, and I'd have a little weed, but I wasn't allowed to smoke because I was on probation, but I'm yep. still shooting up. Yep. And I would smoke a little bit. And I'd make the call, even. And then I'd smoke a little bit, and then I'd just kind of, like, not care. Mm -hmm. Next thing I know, 30, 45 minutes went by, and I would realize that I had forgot about it. Yep. And I think weed's definitely good for that. Yep. That's funny you mentioned being on probation and couldn't smoke it. Uh, another bad thing, I don't know if it's really a big thing anymore, but that synthetic marijuana, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. man, I got into that. I was on probation because I got caught with weed. I think I was like 20 years old. Okay. And uh, I think I remember that. Yeah. I think I remember that. Y'all got pulled old. I don't, I don't know exactly what happened. I got, I I got remember caught you with getting weed charged. a couple times. Uh, the first time, I just went through the motions with the first offenders program. Second time, I actually got charged with it. Okay. But um, I think it was the first time I got on that fake weed. They call it Spice K2. Kush. Man. Yeah, they, they have I, a lot of names. As far as like my mental stuff and just what drugs have done to me, I think that was probably the worst stuff I ever For did. Sure. And... I don't know why I kept doing it. It it just kind of got it. There's something in there that's addicting. And uh, like I had a group of friends that was doing it with me and it, I was getting sick every time I did it, passing out, nodding out. It was just really, yeah, it was terrible. Clucking out. They call it, they call it chicken in jail. So when you get it in chicken. jail, it's called chicken. Okay. And then when people get all fucked up, they call it clucking out. Wow. Well, I did that a lot. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, that's bad uh, stuff. I watched a dude cluck out one time in work release last time I was in. He smoked this shit every day. I don't know how he got it in, whatever. But he's, bro, and he was seeing demons. Like, he yeah. thought he was going to fucking die. Oh, he, yeah. You could see the fear in his face. The way he was screaming was coming from his soul, bro. Yep. He was scared to death. Yep. It gave me real bad paranoia, real bad anxiety. Um, I got off of it. That was honestly... That was probably one of the hardest things I quit doing, but I think it's because I was doing it every day. Yeah. And um, it only lasted like 15, 20 minutes. Yeah, it right? didn't last long. I, I remember sitting 
on this couch where I was living in Berryville at the time, and I would hit a bowl of it, you know, just getting off work, and I would pass out sitting up on the couch, and I would wake up like eight, nine hours later. No oh, shit. Yeah, and I would just hit the bowl again. Wow. Yeah, yeah, it was. Where were you getting it from? You had a supplier? Was there a store around here? Um, it, The friends I was running around with, uh, they they would like find these little convenience stores, and some, right. sometimes they were far away. Like okay. we drove into the city to find this stuff, and I know there was a a smoke shop in Martinsburg. It was near the mall that sold it like behind the counter. Right, but you had to know how to ask for yeah. it. Yeah. So once we got linked up there, we were going like every other day. We were like, like I was literally like stealing stuff and pawning it to get the money to go. Like that stuff got me. Got you that hard. Got oh, you yeah. that quick. It wasn't yeah. like we did a whole different thing. Yeah. And and then the thing is, if I never uh, was put on probation to stop smoking weed, I don't think I ever would have done it. All right. Same thing for me. Yeah. So I was on probation. My buddy Pukey started smoking it. And then he was bringing it around. We were smoking. We was doing roofs and shit. Yeah. I remember we was on a roof one day. And I said, that's it. I ain't smoking no more of that shit. Yeah. I'm done. I ain't never smoking that shit again. Get it away from me. Yeah, I, I, want ne- more. I would never do it on a roof. <laughs> right. Well, it wasn't far. It wasn't high. It wasn't a steep pitch. But we was just taking a break. Yeah. But, uh, Talking about the convenience store, that one over there by the bowling alley, not the Seven Eleven, mm-hmm. but the one down the road. Okay. That's where we used to get it. Yeah, we could go right in there. He had bags. It was called Kush. Yeah, and it was like five grams, ten grams, whatever. And it was blue and green. There was all different kinds of yeah. that stuff. Like I remember some of the names. Like there was one called Dead and Buried. Hmm. I remember me and a buddy smoked that one time, and we just drove in a circle around Berryville, and it's the middle of the night. Middle of the week, just drove in a circle and just wasn't stopping all night long, just smoking that stuff. We didn't even know what we were doing. You know, yeah, it's not good for you. No, no, that's some bad stuff. Yeah, I don't really hear about it much anymore. No, so I don't hear about it much good. either. Yeah, that's yeah. a good thing. Yeah. Um, my understanding was they kept changing the ingredients, right? Yep. Somehow making it different each time. Yep. It's a little bit different buzz. Yeah, I never was a fan of that. No, I- I'm still with the all natural. Marijuana, man. Yep. You know what I mean? I'm a flower guy. I don't do the dabs. I don't do the carts. Yeah, I don't either. Yeah, I would yeah, rather I just, smoke good tasting flour. Yep. That's pretty much all I do now. <laughs> and it's like it's like almost spiritual yeah. at a point. You know what I'm saying? It's yep. part of the earth. It's like it's healing properties and mental. I don't know. Maybe yep. it makes me dumb as fuck. Maybe that's why I don't <laughs> remember nothing. You know what I mean? But I think it helps pe- certain people if function better. You know, I, I, I think it does hit everybody differently. Because I sure. I have met people that just can't do anything on it. You know, they just will sit around home all day. And anxious. Not, not anxious or lazy. Yeah. 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 Anxious or lazy. It makes me anxious sometimes if, I, if I'm like in a big crowd. I like to smoke it by myself. You right. Know, if I had a long day, I'll come hit a bowl or a joint, just hang out in my room, go to bed, you know. Right. Or when I'm writing songs, you know. I was just getting ready to ask that yeah. question. How do you tune in with music like that? Because I always thought that pot and music went hand in hand for me. It does. Um I, I've wrote all my songs at different times in my life and they all kind of it when you sit down and you're like, okay, I'm gonna write this song, most of the time that's when it doesn't work. You need to just wait for the song to come to you. And it I will say most of the time it has happened when I've been smoking weed. So Right. Not so much when you're doing the hard drugs. You 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 like I would do a lot of cocaine and get a notebook out and be like, Okay, we're gonna get this done. It would make no sense the next morning. Okay. Just a bunch of scribbles. A bunch you know? of crazy words, yeah. crazy thoughts that were all jumbled because they were so fast. Yep. But the slowing down of the weed and the creativity that it adds kind of helps you to. Yep. It's interesting too, isn't it? Yep. Hmm. And then like, so uh, I guess that brings me back to like drinking on stage. You're talking about drinking on stage and never lost track of the words or, or couldn't all, play. All the time. Okay. All, especially, uh recently just because i'm getting older you know my memory's changing a lot and uh you know i'll I'll start forgetting you know if i get too much of a buzz i'll forget the lyrics you know i'll i'll keep going but people will be like hey you missed that line and that's especially (laughs) if it's one they know so you just keep on using no i've always kept going if you make a mistake and you're on stage you're supposed to just keep going okay and don't never let nobody know you made a mistake or at least try right do your best to keep on getting and i still you know even when i'm not drinking i'll forget the words sometimes sure. but you just keep going sure most of the time people don't even notice and you're looking around you're paying attention to other shit going on too right do you ever get distracted by that yeah especially if it's a busy show i got distracted uh this past weekend a lot because they were pretty packed houses so 
Right. You know, you, you, I, I've always been somebody that reads the room and watches the room a lot. So even when I'm up there doing that, I'm kind of in the back of my head, like, okay, what's going on out here? Right. Just, and if something takes your attention away for a second and you're fumbling. Yep. I would do that. I could see me doing that for sure. Yeah. I do close my eyes sometimes and just try to focus, especially if it's one I want to get right. Right. You know, if it's a special song or something. Right. You know. I remember years ago you was at 147 and you did that Eminem yep. song. Yeah, I I don't do that one much anymore. Dude, that was <laughs> awesome, bro. Yeah, it was yeah. it was in it was more in style back then people, because of what it was. Yeah, people loved that though. Dude, yeah. it was fucking badass. Yeah. But I remember that chick got up in your face and was trying. She was drunk as piss, oh, bro. Yeah. She was trying to rap and sing the song and fucking you up. I think I came up and got her off the stage. Yes, she was I like rem- literally I, right I in your face. Now. Yeah, and I was like, yo, you got to get out of this <laughs> face, bro. What are you doing right now? Yeah, I I vaguely remember that. Yeah. I, I don't have the oxygen much for that one anymore. I, I used to smoke cigarettes, too, for years. I, I quit cigarettes maybe three or four years ago. Hell, yeah. I so, wish I could. Yeah, that's a tough one, too. Isn't it, though? Yeah, it really Jesus. is. I don't really crave them anymore, though. Right. Yeah. That's a good thing, too. Yeah. I, I, I've quit, but I've never quit and been able to stay quit. Yeah. And I think we could help with that, too, especially if you're rolling a lot of joints. Just kind of. I mean, empty a cigarette pack out and fill it full of joints. That's what my buddy does. <laughs> it's yeah. a lot of weed. Yeah, but. <laughs> but that's about what I already smoke. And with all yeah. that, I'm smoking cigarettes after that, too, yeah. man. It's bad. That's a lot on your lungs. It is. And yeah. it's, uh, uh, I think, dude, I got this oral thing where I want to be fucking putting something in my mouth. It's a mm-hmm. piece of candy. It's I'm drinking coffee. I'm drinking a beer. I'm smoking a joint. I'm smoking a cigarette. I'm smoking a vape. Yeah. I mean, it's not as bad as putting needles in my arm. And taking no. a bunch of Xanaxes and yeah. all that shit in comparison. Right. But it's still not something I want to keep doing. Yeah. And, you know, focusing on all that shit sometimes <clears throat> is hard. Yeah. I enjoy a cigarette. And that's hard, too, when you know you enjoy something. I mean, a cigarette goes great with a cup of coffee, you know, when you're driving up the road with the window down, you know. That's what I always used to do. But I, I just decided one day I didn't want to do them anymore, you know, and I just kind of lost the taste. I always smoked Marble Reds, mm-hmm. so they were the strong ones. Mm-hmm. And I just lost the taste for them. And yeah. even when I was still drinking and people around me were chain smoking cigarettes, I still didn't want one. That's crazy too, isn't it? It was actually starting to bother me, you know, yeah, the smoke getting in my face and everything. But That's a good thing. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know what happened with that. I just decided one day, stop. Probably from singing, you know, you run out of air. You need a lot of air and oxygen to sing. Yeah. I, I know that's changed a lot for me too over the years. So and since you stopped smoking, has that helped? It's helped a lot. Right. Yeah, and I'll, I'll be honest. It, uh, the small amount of time I've been sober, I've noticed that I can breathe better on stage. Like I've been able to hold the notes out longer and okay. stuff. I, so I don't know if that had anything to do with it or not. But or maybe I'm just focusing more on like my diaphragm and holding those notes in. You know, down in here. You know, right. I don't know. I'm not sure. A little bit of both. Yeah, a little bit of both. So. uh have to ask, like, how about chicks throwing themselves at you at this point? Like, I mean, this this bra was all up in your face that night ten years ago. I, p- people kind kind of say that that happens to me a lot, but it really doesn't. Okay, you know, I I've been with the same woman now for years, uh, Casey, and uh, you know, we've got a family, and pretty much everybody that knows me knows that. But right, but it really doesn't happen as much as people think, you know. And even when it does, they're just being respectful. Like, hey, it was a good show. You're like, they're not sloppy. Right, right. But that all depends on where you're at, right. too. <laughs> well, I mean, I could see, a, you yeah. know, you got a gang of chicks and they're out flirtatious as hell, half drunk. And, yeah. Yeah. And see, that's and not. It's, it's as innocent as it is yeah. ridiculous. And that's never been something that's attractive to me anyway. Gotcha. So, so I just kind of. Hey, thanks for coming. Gotcha. You know. So your music thing too is like what outlaw country is your thing, right? Outlaw country, a little bit of folk, classic rock. Um, I don't know what you would call the genre for my originals. It's kind of like an alternative country, maybe almost rock, right? Kind of sound. But yeah. it's it's you. You're talking. You're you're talking about your life, your experiences yeah. at this point. Yeah, all, pretty much all the songs that I have are you know written by just me. There's one or two that were co-written. Uh, by a good friend of mine, Kenny Brown. Um, he's a older guy, and uh, he's a uh, he's the founder of this festival I do every year. It's called Cannon Fire Music Festival, okay. um, and all the proceeds to that festival go toward addiction treatment and uh, the families that have been affected by addiction nice. treatment. 
So, and that's held in Burkittsville, Maryland. Uh, we've got one coming up in the spring. I believe it's May 4th and May 5th. And the tickets are all on sale through Facebook. Um, the links are all on all my pages, or you can contact Kenny Brown directly. Right. So how can but, they find you? Where, where is it? Where can everybody find you? What's your socials? I have a Facebook fan page under the name Dylan Wolfel. Um, I have an Instagram under Dylan Wolfel. It's all on there too. I've got YouTube. I've got all, I've got my two singles on all streaming platforms: uh, Spotify, YouTube, Amazon Music, and Apple Music. And there's probably some other small ones it's on too. But and it's all just under your name, pretty much. Right. Well, yeah. with your spelling of your name, it's hard to get it mixed up, right? Do you ever do a search and see if anything else comes up? Uh nothing normally comes up because that's a that's a difficult last name. Right. Yeah. It's a W O E L F E L, and I've seen it spelled all different ways. Yeah, I bet so. But yeah, yeah. You grow up with a name like that. Everybody's like, "How do you?" It, yeah, it's a if tough. they don't want to ask. It or... was hard for me to learn how to spell it. <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah, I still get it messed up yep. every once in a while. Yep. Yeah, man, that's awesome. Uh, so yeah, this is what you're doing full time is music. You're not working any other way. Uh, we we decided last year, uh, all of 2023, I leaned hard into the music i played every single weekend the whole year um i got that album recorded i did that the beginning of december that was kind of the end game goal for last year before that i was working at an auto body shop it was in falls church and it was just too far away from where i was living i was staying in boyce and then i moved back to berkeley springs west virginia now i'm back in boyce so it's just it was too far away so we decided I should lean into music for a while, and it and it's definitely helped a lot. Um, I'm probably going to get back into the workforce now that I've got all that stuff done. Okay, just to have a backup, you know, during the week, a little bit more income coming in. But right, some part time or something, maybe. Yeah, just not too many hours. Just something for me to do during the week while the kids so, are in school. Do you feel like working takes a lot of focus or a lot of time away from what you could be doing with music? It does. I definitely got a lot more done last year um, because I could just focus on that. But I'm a I'm a dad, too. So a lot of my time goes into that during the week as well. Uh, my daughter started preschool this past fall. So I'm kind of, you know, nothing to do during the day now. So. Right. But it's, it still gives you that, that option to do what you got to do with your kid. Yeah. And then come home and set your own goals for the day. Yep. Yeah, there's something to be said about just living that way. Yep. You know what I mean? It's just uh, that grind. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm over the grind. Yeah. Music's definitely a grind, too. Uh, but you're doing it for yourself. Yeah. The difference is, is we spend so much time doing a 40 or 50 hour week for this asshole making this Jeff Bezos is all this money. Mm -hmm. And we come home and we can barely pay our bills. We can barely yep. eat. We can barely afford a car that's going to keep running. Yep. Um. And we spend so much time doing it. So I, if you're going to do something on your own, man, I have totally dove into this head first. I'm spending yep. 12 hours a day doing this shit. When I launch this, it's going to be a big fucking thing for me. Right. If it works out, it works out. If it don't, I guess I'll move on to the next thing. Right. But I'm not going to spend one second less time working on my shit than I did for all them people I made money for in the last 40 years. Right. Exactly. Yep. I'm not going to do that. Yep. And if you're going home and you're trying to... Uh, whatever build music or build a youtube channel and you're just sitting there on your ass yep them hours that you could be doing something you are just hurting yourself yep yeah when when i'm uh sitting around at home i'm always advertising always networking because it's a lot of communicating with venues reaching out to new people you know this is me mm -hmm. this is my music and uh you know just keeping the schedule together you know i do all my booking on my own i don't have any booking managers don't have it. and all my my album was completely independently paid for too it's not a part of any labels or anything right um the best music out is that right? yeah it's the best shit out yeah. it's the only thing i listen to i don't yeah. listen to very much well or or mainstream mainstream yeah. shit yeah me either very little i have to like dig and find all the stuff i actually like um, I want. I got a couple songs we're gonna listen to when we're done with this because yeah. I want you to hear them. We're gonna smoke a joint. Hopefully yeah. you can do that. Whatever. Oh yeah. Um, but oh, yeah. yeah, I got it. This all hooked up because I got a couple jams. I just want to chill with you and and just listen to these songs. You know cool. what I'm saying? Some shit. How about a uh, Hunter Root? You heard him? I don't think so. Holy shit! Hunter you're gonna Root. love this, bro. Yeah. You're gonna fucking love this. Hell yeah. How about um, smoking and drinking by Everlast? 
That he, sounds familiar. He did that bitch on yeah. stage, and it's sick. I've been listening to it for a week and a half now, and I oh, fucking love it. I love yeah. it, dude. I love it. Sounds like so, my kind of song. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and, and that's what it's about. He's uh, Yeah, the words are fucking awesome. Yeah. For sure. It's a definitely a good jam. Hell yeah. Uh, nice. Yeah, man. So I guess anybody could book you as well. You said you do your own book, and where do they find you on Facebook for that? Yeah, my Facebook fan page has my email and everything listed. I don't like to give my number straight out to the Facebook page. Right, of course um, not. But they can send me a message through Facebook, either my personal or my fan page, and then my email's listed. I try to do everything through email so it's all somewhere where it's all together you know right. so i can keep it straight yeah you gotta keep those threads it, it's together. a it's a lot <laughs> it is man but but it's been worth it for sure um right now i'm booking from april to december march is completely booked out right now and there are a couple months that are almost full so if anybody does want anything i do private parties um local venues bars breweries you know whatever restaurants so what's a typical really. what's a typical let's just say I don't know. You're on a three hour party or something. What do you charge for that? It depends on where it is and how far you got to drive. If they have any specific requests, a lot of places, those private parties, they like to, you know, request a song every other song. Kind of you know? like the Toby Keith thing you just did. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'd say between three and 500, somewhere in that range. It all depends on where it's at. Right. Right. Yeah. Okay. This was up. Yeah. But I try to keep, if it's nearby, it's a hundred bucks an hour. Right. Yeah. Yeah, but that's that's good money, man. And you're yeah. doing that every weekend. So what's that? Fridays and Saturdays mostly, or mostly? Like I just did a Thursday, Friday, Saturday. So I did pretty good this past week. Right on. I, I'm doing another Thursday, Friday, Saturday this week. I'm at a Horseshoe Curve in Bluemont, Virginia, Thursday at eight. I'm at On Cue Sports Bar in Front Royal Friday from eight to eleven. Saturday I'm at the Stephen City Moose Lodge from seven to ten. Oh yeah. So yeah. Yeah, man. It's Lining hard to up. remember all that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, <laughs> but that's what it takes, man. Yeah, you it got takes to. commitment to know all that and remember all that. And yep. not drinking, not doing any of that crazy Helps shit. Helps a lot. Helps a lot, doesn't yeah. it? The drinking's just a distraction. And I, I couldn't even tell you why I was doing it when I was still still drinking, you know, right before I quit. I was just like, this is just dumb. I just need to stop. It just you know? becomes a habit. It becomes a thing. Yeah. Yeah. It's like you always you go in a bar and you always just have that drink in your hand. And I've I just recently tried an NA beer and it they're terrible. I'm, an uh, NA beer was yeah. like a O Duels yeah, or something. It, it was terrible. I I'll just stick to either like sweet tea or water or something. I, I have been drinking a lot of caffeine since I quit. Okay. But, so that's like one of the last buzzes I have left. So Yeah. Well yeah, it is. But isn't yeah. It? A little bit of weed, a little bit of caffeine. Yep. That's all I need right now. And guitar. Yep. Yeah, man. So I feel like you're a good dad, too. How, how's that? Oh, yeah. What has that done for you? Uh, it's changed me a lot. It's made me more responsible, for sure. Um, my my daughter's like my whole world. And we just found out we're having a little boy in July. That's kind of where I was going. So uh, that that was big news for us. We, right on. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. So, and how far apart will the kids be? Um, About five five years apart, yeah. It's not terrible. Yeah. My my son was about four and a half years older than my daughter. Yeah. He picked on her a lot. (laughs) Yeah. yeah, You got that to look forward to. Yeah, Addie's really excited about it. Yeah, absolutely, dude, because it's going to give him somebody to be with. Did you have brothers and sisters? Yeah, I I was the oldest, so it was a little different for me. Right. um, She's got other siblings, too, um, but um, she's excited to have a, you know, a younger sibling. Yeah. And once we told her, you know. It was a boy. She got really excited. So yeah, she's a little girl. She's already wanted yeah. to nurture and take care of her little brother. Yep, yeah, that's what's up, man. But that's good motivation too. You know, you got to have something to live for. For sure. You know, got to have a but, purpose, a reason to get out of bed. Yep. Something bigger than you sometimes too. Yep. You know what I mean? Can't just all be about me, me, me. Yep. It keeps you going. Yeah. That's kind of one reason I leaned into these podcasts this way, man, because there's so much mistakes that you go through life making, you know, whether it's pills, drinking, fucking sex with the wrong people, whatever. Yeah. You know what I mean? And and drugs is like one thing I can talk about. Yeah. Drugs, alcohol, shit like that. I know the mistakes that comes with all that, and I mm-hmm. can relate to pretty much anybody when it comes to that. Yeah. And I figure if people can check these out and kind of see that, you know, there's a possibility of getting past it all, and every time you take a little step, Mm-hmm. Towards getting past it, you feel a little better. Yep. Doesn't mean you ain't gonna fall backwards. Don't mean you're not gonna have a drink one day. 
You yeah. know what I'm saying? But at the same time, too, yeah. that's that's what this is. It's a struggle, dude. Every yeah. day is a fucking struggle to keep your head above and stay away from that shit that pulls you back down. Yeah. By knowing that you're so much better off. Yeah. You got you got to realize that you have the addiction first and get out of the denial stage and then realize that you can control what's going on and you got to have the willpower to realize that and actually do it. And like you said, it gets easier every day. You know, you get to the point where you're like, why did I do that? You know, I have no desire to do that again. So I compare it to like a set of magnets, uh, the further away from you, you know, you turn magnets one way, they push, you turn the other way, they pull. So the further you get away from it, the harder they push. Yep. You know what I'm saying? The closer you are, it's still got that pull and you got to keep it apart. But yep. once it gets to a certain point, they flip around and it starts pushing you. Mm-hmm. It's not so easy to come back into a, it. A big thing, too, with it is uh, make sure you stay away from the wrong people. Mm-hmm. You know, some of those people might be your best friends or you think they are. And, you know, if they're doing something and you're trying to stop, maybe you need to get away from that person, you know, no matter, no matter how bad it hurts you or, you know, you don't want to do it. And that, that was a big part for me, too, is I had to cut a lot of people off and, it wasn't anything against them. I was doing it for me. Yeah. You know. You just and, know that influence was something you couldn't yeah. keep dealing with. Yeah. And I hope the best for them. I hope they find the right path, too. And some of them I still talk to. Right. Uh, especially now that I'm past it all, you know. Right. Now you can talk to them and kind of, there's that separation there, yeah. too. So it's yeah. easier to talk to and hope you're doing well. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Sarah, I think somebody else the other day said something really similar to staying away from people. And it's a peer pressure is a big part of it. Absolutely. Yeah. Especially like, you know, I'd, I'd go to parties and people would be like, hey, you want to line? And they knew I had been trying to stop. And I'd be like, no, I don't want to line. And, and they start making fun of you. Right. And, and it's like, and everybody's going to be up all night. And you're like, oh, well, I might as well take a little taste. But it's, Peer pressure. But it, and it does, it's that's real. not only for a 12-year-old. That's not only no, for a 14-year-old boy or girl. That's for a grown-ass man. It's a real thing. It, it It's like being on the playground in school is what it feels like. Thanks. And, and uh, it's just, it's childish. It's, it is. Yeah, but it, I think also once you learn to be able to stand on your own and say, nah, bro, I'm good. Nah, yeah, bro, I'm good. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? There's some, there's, there's integrity in that. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then you got the pride to be able to stand there and say, nah. You know what I mean? Not that you're too good for it anymore, just that you don't want to. Yeah. I got buddies I used to go out with, and this motherfucker throw them drinks down my throat. You uh-huh. One after the other after the other. I'm like, oh, dude, yeah. I don't want it. Man, we was at a show in, uh, uh, what's that place up there in West Virginia where it's outside? The big venue that everybody used to go, Shally Acres. We was up oh, there. Oh, yeah. I never got to go there. No shit. No, I never So did. I only went there a couple times a couple yeah. years ago, but they knew <clears throat> this chick that was serving tequila shots. Oh, that was that was one of my favorites. <laughs> Bro, and there's, I'm so drunk at this point. Now, give me another shot, and I try to throw it over. Everybody tips their head back, and I'm like, I toss it back <laughs> over my shoulder, and they caught me. Oh, they yeah. They were fucking pissed. Yep. They made me take another one. It was not fun. Yeah. So I understand the peer pressure thing, you know what I mean? And I was literally like, no, no, no. Yep. Oh, shut up. Here, take it. I throw it over my shoulder, and I still couldn't win. Yep. I still had to take the shot. Yep. So that is a real thing. And that was two years ago. I'm fucking 48 or something. Yeah, you just had a birthday. Yeah, man. Yeah. Fucking Friday. My old ladies was like before that, too. We're getting old. Well, happy late birthday. I think I told you on Facebook. But. Right. I appreciate it. Yeah, man. So uh, I guess we've dropped your socials. We've talked about all that. You're releasing an album in March. Yeah, it's going to be called uh, Even If It Kills Me. It's okay. got 10 songs and it's a whole studio band. So nice. It's going to be nice. The whole thing, instead of just you on the stage. Yeah, it's drums, bass, harmonica, lead guitar, a little piano. Fuck yeah. A lot That's of it's going to sound a little bit like rock music. Okay. Some of it, um, you know, once you hear it with the whole band together. There's two that sound really country, and the rest are kind of just a genre of their own. Okay. But I, I think people I like are really going to like it, though. It's, it's going to... I think it's going to open new doors for me okay, a, a little good. bit, I hope. And then how are you planning on pushing that afterwards, just through your socials like you do it now, or do you have a plan on... Pretty much. Um, I'm going to push it through my socials. I'm going to do a batch of CDs. Um, I'm doing that festival I was telling you about. Mm-hmm. Um, so there's a headliner for that festival, but they're actually going to put me on stage after the headliner. Okay. And I'm going to do the whole album from front to, to uh, finish, and hopefully I have some other band members with me because i mostly use studio artists up there right 
Um, but I'm going to try to get a group together to help me in May uh, to do the whole album at that festival as well. No shit. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So I hope I can set this up and uh, make it sound right. So Hell you're going to yeah. play a couple jams for us? What are you going to play? Uh, I'm going to do a song called Slow Suicide off the album. Um, it's kind of about getting out of that dark place as far as addiction and drinking. And it's got a positive message towards the end that I hope people will, will catch in the last verse. Okay. But yeah. Hell yeah. Let's get it. Let's do it. Every chemical I crave on this dark highway illuminates the past as I fade away. There's just no hope in a mind like this. Ghosts and demons shaking their fists. The voices scream so loud that I can't breathe. So I take another shot and close my eyes And I live another day In this slow suicide People try into the light But I'm so far away I just can't fight I harvest all these shadows and I pull my weight in pain I breathe in and out and I curse my name I can't tell if I feel nothing or if I feel Shot and close my eyes And I'll live another day In this slow suicide Then a hand reaches down in the water And I recognize those tattoos He said, I know your world is dead and gone But with you here at least the black looks blue At least the black looks blue So I pour out this shot and I buy I won't live another day In this slow suicide Suicide Every chemical I crave On this dark highway Illuminate 
serenades the past as I fade away Something like it. Oh yeah, that's <laughs> fucking awesome. I dig it. I dig it. I like it. Hell yeah. That's what's up. Yeah, that one's on the album. And and it's it sounds really good. Hell yeah. It's got some crazy like wah wah pedal solo at the end with the lead guitar. That one sounds like a rock ballad. Okay. Yeah. Hell yeah, you add the drums and all that shit in there too. Oh yeah. That's what's up. Fuck yeah, I appreciate you coming, bro. That right there was fucking awesome. Hopefully I get yeah. you back on in like six months or something like that. We'll see what's going on with you, how far you've moved forward. Definitely. Hell yeah. Thanks for having yeah, me. Yeah, man, for sure. So leave a like, man. Tell Dylan what's up with this music. Go follow him. I'm going to put links in the description to all of his stuff. If you want to get him to come do a show or something, man, you can holler at him. You, you heard what the man said. You heard what he's about, man. So yeah, yeah. Hell yeah. Likes are free. <laughs> yes, they are. <laughs> Yeah, man, fuck yeah, that's awesome, dude. I'm glad you're writing your 